just had our first conversation actually last week. And so really appreciate it. And uh, certainly to everyone that did join, I know it's a beautiful day here. So I know it can be tempting to stay outside. So really appreciate it. Peter mentioned, um, I'm the director of the Boston Office for the U.S. Commercial Service, part of the International Trade Administration, part of the U.S. Department of Commerce. So we have quite a number of organization names. In fact, we have more. I wouldn't even bother you with those. Uh, but very happy. This first time that we've recruited from Bates, and so very happy to be doing this. And what I thought I'd do um, in the next little while is detail um, our international trade internship program. Um, also talk. Uh, quite a bit about our agency and how we assist U.S. exporters. And also, as Peter mentioned, um, I'd like to lay out some other opportunities, um, just from what I found um, from different U.S. government agencies, other possibilities, state trade offices, other options you might explore, uh, whether you're seeking an internship or a full-time career, so I mean, it's back in your mind for later. And I also have had some experiences in the private sector and international trade. So I'd be happy to go ahead and talk about those experiences and work for a trade association, a global logistics firm, in terms of what I've seen um, in my daily work, but also the different opportunities and how, if you're interested in international trade and a global career, in terms of how you can set up your path. So before I do that, I'd like to do is turn it here, um, if there is anything you'd like me to try to focus on during this session, and I'd really like to be as interactive as possible, so please ask questions go along or make any comments. So uh, maybe Alex, we'll start with you. All right. So you cut it a bit there at the beginning. Can you repeat the question very quickly? Oh, sure. I'm. Yeah, but please let me know. Uh, actually, I mentioned this to Peter. I'm not in the best area of our house because our son is taking an A. So um, I let him take the better spot given what he's doing versus my getting a chance to talk with uh, all you students. So, uh, but if you could mention your name and uh, your major and what year you are, and certainly if there's anything that you're interested in my focusing on. Okay, um, so I'm Alex. Uh, I'm an incoming junior. My majors are politics and Latin American studies, and I guess I'm most interested in uh, exports. Okay, okay, great. Thanks, Alex. And Sarah? Yeah. Oh, I, I think she's on mute. Okay. Yeah, I think. Can you hear me? Yes, now? I'm able to hear you. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm. Sarah, I'm an, also an incoming junior, majoring in sociology, minoring in Chinese. And I am just mostly interested in learning about the various career paths you've taken, both in private and government sectors. OK, okay great. Thanks, Sarah. And Daniel? Um, I'm a rising senior. Hi. Oh. <laughs> uh, is a politics major. And I was hoping you could also talk about maybe some of the differences between public and private work, but more specifically what it's like to be part of a bureaucracy and some of the dynamics there. Okay, sure. Okay, great. Uh, great questions. Thanks, Daniel. And is there another Daniel? I, I don't see the name. There so. is, yes. Hello. Okay. Hi. Hi, uh, my name is Daniel Logan, um, and I'm an upcoming uh, junior, uh, and I'm majoring in uh, history and sociology, um, and I think I might uh, be interested in a path uh, in public service. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, thanks, Daniel. And Amelia? Oh, yeah. Hi, sorry, my microphone was off. Um, yeah, I'm basically interested in everything else everybody's already said, so I'll leave it at that. Okay, okay, perfect. Okay, great. Thank, thank you all. And again, please do feel free to, if you have any questions at all or any comments along the way, um, you know, want this to be as interactive as possible. Um, so, so first of all, in terms of my path, um, and I don't normally self-introduce myself uh, when I do a presentation or a conference, but I think benefit in terms of the various opportunities in international trade because uh, I have had a variety. Uh, so, I uh, my first few years of college, I went to Boston University, and I was a poli sci major and economics minor. And then I transferred to the University of California at Berkeley, 
where I finished up. And so I majored in political economy of industrial societies, another mouthful. And it was interdisciplinary, and so I loved it. Um, obviously, you're at a terrific liberal arts college, and so I loved having a liberal arts program um, at UC Berkeley. Then uh, afterwards, I uh, took a gap year where I uh, traveled and I worked around the world for a year. And um, so I spent four months in Europe, four months in the Middle East, and four months in Asia. Uh, this was, I'm really going to date myself, but this is 1991, 1992. And so this was before it was called a gap year. And so my parents didn't really know like what to call it. <laughs> so I had a disadvantage. Um, but it was a phenomenal experience. Um, and I did an internship at the U.S. Embassy in Brussels. Um, and I was there for four months. That was a fantastic experience. And I'll talk more about that. But if you do have an opportunity to do an internship overseas, if you have the means to do so, it's a terrific opportunity. Um, I learned quite a bit and it was just a great, um, you know, stepping stone for what I'm doing now still. Uh, also when I was in college in terms of internships, I interned on Capitol Hill as an for the Senate Judiciary Committee um, in DC. And that was when Joe Biden was chair of the committee. And so that was a fascinating summer in DC and there were quite a number of landmark cases that came down. So all the interns were quite busy and it's absolutely uh, to have that experience. Then I got an MBA for import export. And we were importing canned seafood from Thailand. And so my role was to source the product. And, um, and so basically negotiated price made sure that the product was safe, obviously being canned seafood, um, dealt with the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, negotiation on the shipping and everything. And I, of course, I tested the product quite a bit, so I still can't eat canned seafood. Um, and then I was in charge of uh, basically helping to re-export the product down to Mexico. And so uh, we were looking for sales agents and reps and also different marketing brokers across the country. Um, and, but my hands were in everything in this company because only eight people. So I handled international logistics. I did pricing, negotiations. I did marketing. I did sales. I did accounting when our account was out. I was doing warehousing, image control. And so that's one aspect, just um, comparing public and private sector. It was fascinating. It was exhilarating because working for a very small firm and really that they were trying to grow and they were doing a great job of growing. Unfortunately, what happened was the Mexican peso devalued when I was there. And so the firm was running to some hard times, um, but it was just an incredible experience. And just in terms of those that um, haven't had an opportunity to have many internships yet, I really do recommend working for a small office at some point um, because you learn so much and you have to cover for people and it's a great opportunity to go ahead and learn various aspects of international trade, which is what I did. Uh, afterwards, I went to work for a company called Fritz. Um, it was later bought up by UPS, but it was a global logistics firm in Los Angeles. And I handled all the incoming paperwork uh, for Fortune 100 um, uh, companies such as JCPenney and Walmart and Reebok. Um, and so it was a great experience. I uh, got tremendous amount out of it because I learned a lot in terms of how these larger companies are really able to um, price and get economies of scale. And so cost in every which way. For example, uh, you know, they would, J.C. Penney's would import apparel from the Northern Mariana Islands, which is U.S. territory. So it was uh, basically, it, would, it was duty free. And so, but yet low labor, low uh, material cost as well. And they'd be importing products in July for the Christmas season just to make sure everything was set. And so, but it was a great experience. It was very much a desk job. Um, I learned a lot over those couple of years. It was a much larger firm, uh, but I did decide to move on because um, it was a lot of paperwork involved and I, that wasn't really the best fit. 
Then I went to go work for the World Trade Center Association in Los Angeles. So I was an international trade manager there. So I worked with importers and exporters doing a lot of seminars and conferences and speaking opportunities. And we would network with you know, various import export companies that needed our services. And we try to point these companies in very different directions. Uh, for assistance and also hands-on help from our end. So we did a lot of events with the, co with the foreign consulates, the foreign trade offices, any type of partner, because we were also trying to really promote through them our services. And so we were trying to be a good partner for them and vice versa. Uh, then it was a pretty easy transition um, from that work to getting a job with the U.S. Department of Commerce in Boston. Uh, my wife is from Massachusetts, so we wanted to move to Boston. And uh, so I started off as an international trade specialist, where uh, basically what my role was in handling Greater Boston was work with that needed help with exporting and providing our services. So um, it was similar work to what I did for the World Trade Center Association, but then I was part of the federal government network and uh, made it a lot easier. Very interesting. It's a fascinating role uh, right now. I work day in, day out with all my colleagues at the U.S. Embassies and Consulates. So on any given day, today, for example, is consulates about 12 or 15 different countries, and client inquiries and client requests and how we can assist. And um, it's very interesting. And that's every day. And tomorrow will be better in different countries. Um, and so what our role is, is helping companies with the export process, companies that are interested in help and how to get started. Maybe they got a trade lead from Turkey or Brazil or some other market. How do they ship their product? How do they import it into the other market? What kind of regulations are involved? And uh, probably the main area that we do assist companies is um, on helping them select what are the best target markets for their product or service. And so we use our databases, our colleagues in various industries, and certainly our colleagues at the U.S. Embassies and Consulates. They're there to really assist companies uh, confirm that there is a good market for them um, or let them know maybe this market's too saturated for them or there's too much in-country competition. Uh, this is where our international trade interns come in quite a bit. Um, and they're a tremendous asset to our office because myself and our boss and colleagues, we don't really have the bandwidth to do like in-depth market research. And so we've been having this very long running international trade in Boston office where interns will compile reports um, for a certain company. Here are the best target countries for you in Latin America, and maybe uh, because they've already sold well, sold their products well in Asia. Latin America's great market, and they detail out. For example, let's say Honduras in here, um, Costa Rica, Peru, Argentina, and here are some reasons why. Um, you know, there's new government initiative, or there's a lot of demands, or there's something of that nature. Um, and then interns will go ahead and compile these reports, and then they will present it um, directly to clients. Um, and granted, so we've all been working remotely the last couple months, so we were used to doing that in person at their facilities, uh, but we're very fortunate that our staff and our interns have the full capabilities of email in our databases and video conferencing where our interns have been doing video presentations to these clients and partners um, on you know, basically any aspect that they're interested in. And so they're very much a part of our office and our staff um, in that aspect. Um, so some of the, um, some of our sample export clients, and I'll, I'll try to, uh, have a wide range. So obviously all any manufactured product. Um, uh, for our office, it's a lot of uh, safety security products right now. 
um, strong aerospace defense, marine technology is a very big sector in southeastern Massachusetts, so we focus on quite a bit. And there's also a lot of services as well. So my colleague covers the healthcare sector, so she's very busy these days, uh, certainly. But anything from medical devices to biotech, to pharmaceutical, um, but also tourism uh, before this recent COVID. Um, she was working with, for example, um, a number of uh, hotels, Boston area hospitals to try to recruit, recruit, if you will, um, foreign patients. Because well, that's a big part of our local economy as well. Um, any revenue coming in from our um, And we do keep everything confidential when we work with the company. Um, but we do, uh, sometimes organizations will say, please go ahead and share my information. It's a great story. You're a tremendous help. Uh, so one I'd like to share with you is the blinds. They're in a suburb of Boston. Uh, it's a beautiful campus for all their services. But one of the areas that we've really focused on assisting them is they have these Braille typewriters. And they approached me, I think, like my third week when I started years ago because they had a new um, international sales rep started and he didn't know how to export. He didn't know the process. So we helped walk him through the process and exporting these Braille typewriters for the blind overseas. And then the services grew over time where our colleagues at, in various countries, they would assist by providing leading schools for the blinds um, in their countries and introductions to Perkins School for the Blind as well as NGOs and Ministry of Education that can help sponsor the purchase of this. Um, we also assisted them quite a bit. Um, they've run into a lot of customs issues because a lot of foreign customs want to charge them duties and taxes. And um, we had to convince our local embassies that no, this should be duty free given the product, um, given the items. And so we work with them for quite a bit. Um, we've worked with sports teams just to give another range, uh, you know, certainly for their, you know, sponsorship. Um, and a number of them, they have, uh, you know, players from different countries. Uh, they, you know, they'll maybe try to get sponsors for their team from overseas. But we've worked in the World Cup, the main design for the Olympic Village. Uh, there's another company we work with, uh, uh, gave us public access to go ahead and mention it, but they do the security badges for the Olympic athletes. And so, and one of the last areas, which is more of my baby, if you will, is uh, I concentrate in the international education sector. And so, uh, as you all know, being at Bates, there's so many international students. That's where schools with, is international student recruitment. And obviously these days it's tough uh, for you know most colleges universities in terms of that so uh, that's been an area where inter in international trade insurance has spent quite a bit of time uh, so we do counseling so we assist companies any question they might have regarding export uh, partner searches that they want to find distributors or joint venture partners or sales representatives overseas uh, will help them with that as well Certainly other connections, maybe they want to connect with foreign government to purchase uh, their product or their service. Uh, any issues that come up, um, certainly along the way, then we're there to assist. And those are all part of the International Trade Internship Program. Um, there's four uh, full-time staff in our Boston office, and we cover the state of Massachusetts. So as you can imagine, all the companies and organizations I want to export, uh, you know, we're quite busy. And so that's why we've had a very robust international trade internship program. Um, we all have different backgrounds and experiences. So, um, you know, I, I mentioned my background, but um, in terms of the public versus the private sector, I have another colleague, for example, that she, um, uh, she used to work for a very large planetarium manufacturer. And so she was traveling overseas quite a bit, um, building planetariums. Then she went to go work for the New Hampshire International Trade Center. Um, and then she came to work for us as well. Another colleague, uh, he just joined our staff. Um, he came from the Export Import Bank of the US. He was there for four to five years. 
Now he just joined our team. He'll be in our Boston office for a couple of years, but he's on the foreign commercial side. So he's on the worldwide assignment. He's just spending his first two years in our office. And then once he's done with that assignment, he's going to get shipped to some other market where he will be rotating from country to country, working at the embassy or the consulate for our division of commerce. Another colleague, she had worked for the import administration um, down in DC, and her role was to basically work on anti-dumping cases. Um, and she was traveling quite a bit um, in that area as well before she joined our staff. So there's a big variety in terms of just within our office, and that's true with all colleagues us in DC or certainly overseas as well, and really everyone that I encounter. Um, in terms of our internship program, uh, this is very exciting for me because we have uh, had uh, historically only uh, 90 95 percent of our interns came from the Boston schools because um, obviously everything has been in person. So, uh, m just so you have a sense, those schools um, are. Uh, uh, Boston College, Boston University, Brandeis, uh, Tufts, Northeastern, um, and Wilson College. And my apologies, I know any of that is sport about that, but um, but that's been most of our interns. And so this again, the first time that we're recruiting from Bates, which is terrific for us. We typically have um, you know uh, about five to seven interns per fall and spring. Uh, we uh, were full Eastern and the other schools I had mentioned as well. And we're, we already have four confirmed interns on board for the summer uh, from different schools. And we're looking for another one or two interns as well that we could go ahead and um, help us. Uh, Additionally, in terms of these interns, uh, one advantage, we've been trying to take advantage of this time, is uh, because everyone's working virtually and they will be for the summer, but in terms of the projects, just working necessarily for our Boston office. So we have one, for example, one co-op, uh, she's now working for our Dublin office virtually. So everything are doing is for our Dublin office and she's doing video conferences with them. Uh, which is terrific. Uh, we have another um, co-op who expressed an interest in working on United Nations projects. So um, she's been working for a New York City office virtually in June as well on various projects. So, and that's gonna be true for our summer and our fall interns is that they will have an opportunity to work for different offices um, as well, wherever you know makes the most sense. Uh, for example, our other New England offices uh, could really use a lot of help. Uh, so we have a Portland main office, uh, and I've, I've spoken with him, and we work very closely together. And uh, he doesn't have the capacity to have an intern because he's a one-person office. But absolutely, there will be an opportunity as well. Um, what I'd like to do now is, uh, so this is my first time, I tested it earlier, but uh, it's my first time using uh, Google Meet because our agency was prohibited from using Zoom. So I'm going to switch now. I'm going to show you some slides, um, but just wanted to stop before I do so. Does anyone have any questions on anything I've said so far? Okay, okay, there'll be plenty of opportunities. So what I'll do is I'll show you some slides um, just for the visual, because I like to talk a little bit more about um, basically uh, our internship program, uh, what, what they've done after the program as well, some sample activities afterwards, and then also I'm gonna talk about other job possibilities as well. So I'm gonna switch, hopefully this will work. Okay. Okay. Is everyone able to see my screen? Are, are, are you able to see my screen? Apologies. Uh, one moment. I'm I'm currently on my uh, okay. phone. 
Uh, so I'm gonna get my. Oh, computer. I can see it now, though. Right back. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Perfect. Okay, great. Um, they want to do all giving us turn, so I'll spend a little time on this side. And feel free to go ahead and follow up um, if anyone would like these slides afterwards. So, uh, so basically, here are just some sample intern activities. Uh, I talked about best prospect countries, um, you know, for products and services. And a lot of our interns have done industry sector reports. Um, and they will go ahead and present, for example, international education or international trade interns. They reach out to international admissions officers at various schools for virtual meetings. And then they will compile reports on here are the top countries for um, foreign students to come in um, and study. And many schools are looking down the road after um, COVID is, is hopefully over sooner than later, uh, but also for online courses as well, because that's really a big revenue stream for them as well. I also work texture sector. A lot of uh, interns will seek out uh, different projects and tenders for Massachusetts companies go ahead and bid on. Um, and uh, just some sample other uh, projects and the partner meetings that our interns um, did this spring. And regulations going to where are the customs requirements going in. And um, some of the meetings that to go ahead and present uh, was uh, the first one was was like their second day uh, on the job but uh, three of our interns presented to the German Consul General in Boston One of the top industries for export and import between Massachusetts New England and also Germany um, and they did an amazing job uh, they also presented an investment director for the Australian Trade Commission uh, for an in-office meeting. And we also met with the director of the Taipei in Boston. And so they did a great job presenting mainly top industries, top avenues for collaboration between our offices, future events, how we could help, for example, Taiwan companies here in Massachusetts and vice versa. They also reached out to uh, the vice chair of the joint um, at the Massachusetts State House, and so we had a virtual meeting, and all our interns they traded um, uh, slots in terms of presenting to him various opportunities for his constituents in his district, but also how we could really best work with the committee um, chairs and their uh, various representatives in terms of assisting these companies going overseas. And so they did a great job with that as well. So typically. Our interns, will, they'll reach out to these companies, they'll compile reports, present virtually, but then also they'll follow up afterwards with any questions. Uh, for example, uh, you know, just uh, uh, last week, one of our interns was on a call and they wanted more information on Vietnam. And so the intern went ahead and was able to go ahead and pull up additional information on Vietnam for this one client on import regulations going into that market. Um, also finding more research in terms of numbers, in terms of prospects for different avenues as well. Uh, our interns do join our office and partner video meetings routinely. Um, that they're very much a part of our office, uh, not just attending and participating, but certainly, you know, we want them to be involved and ask questions, provide comments, and they're very much a part of the meeting. And there are many opportunities for various webinars. Uh, so, for example, the last couple of weeks, we've had webinars internally from the World Bank and the International Monetary Funds and Export-Import Bank, uh, but also many different sales and uh, opportunities in various markets overseas. And afterwards, um, at the end of the internship, um, and uh, for those that applied on Handshake, uh, you know, those were sample activity and project summaries um, that interns did. And that's very helpful, certainly to build up in terms of your resume, your LinkedIn, but also in terms of future job references for us down the road, um, because we're always happy to help in any aspect um, afterwards. 
What I'd like to do now is also um, just spend a little, the next three slides talking about what some of our interns have done afterwards. So for those that are not uh, a rising senior yet, um, here are just some example um, pursued after an internship in our office. And so as I mentioned at the outset, you know, working in a US embassy or consulate overseas is fantastic. Uh, many of them um, are having virtual opportunities as part of this internship. We would like to make that happen as well. Maybe you're supervised by the Boston office, but actually doing some virtual work for an embassy or consulate. Um, and here are just some different opportunities. I don't want to read them all, but in terms of where students have gone. It's been to a wide variety of opportunities. And that's something which um, really on one early stage of the internship, I like to have a conversation with each student and find out what he or she is most interested in because I'd like that could be a very much a big part of your project base and um, certainly learning more about that area, whether you're interested in international marketing or international finance or working for a consulting firm or another government agency, whatever it might be, that there can be an opportunity um, to go ahead and learn more and possibly build contacts as well for maybe for your next opportunity. Here are just some schools that uh, students have gone on to study at. Obviously, there's a wide variety, uh, but uh, a lot of them have gone on after college uh, and obtained master's degree, um, MBA programs, law schools. A number of them have actually been overseas as well. Um, and Uh, here are just some sample full-time positions that our Boston interns have been able to, to have um, after working um, for us as an intern. And so a number of U.S. government agencies, obviously some um, overseas opportunities as well, think tanks, a lot of international nonprofits, um, export, export companies, import firms, consulting firms, banks, um, and then, you know, even, um, you know, some students have gone out just to a different area, maybe not even international, but, uh, but maybe they learned a lot, I think, through the internship in terms of what their interest is. And so here's an overview of uh, the logistics of our international trade internship program. Um, so obviously, again, it's virtual for the summer and it will be in the fall um, as well. Uh, and um, for the summer, we are uh, we are able to have some flexibility as well in terms of hours. Um, and uh, typically, what we've had is full time interns in our office. Now, certainly, students we in a different location, a different time zone, and so we would go ahead and make that work. Um, we do have some uh, morning video conference meetings, so but those could be optional, um, and I would just let you know in advance if this is something that you'd want to be an early riser for, uh, but we could be flexible on the hours as well. Uh, typically, if you're looking possibly for next summer, typically we do confirm our interns by February for the summer. That's what happened this summer, but because everything is virtual, we were able to take on additional interns recently. Um, so for the fall and the spring, uh, it's full days, seven hours a day, um, and students usually start the first week of classes and up to the week before finals. And for this fall right now, um, I'm still taking applications. We do have the candidates already been confirmed, but I'm very much in the process right now for the fall. And um, those might be interested in, in uh, the spring, typically by September or October. The, the, that's when it's best to go ahead and apply. Um, applications, uh, we've seen Summer, we received 100 applications. Uh, we received already more than, more than 250 for this fall, and uh, last spring we received over 250 as well. Uh, for next summer, for those that might be interested, you know, in person in our office, we do provide um, transit benefits. So we would provide you with the T. Those that know Boston, it's based on our public transportation system. So you'd be able to take the subway, you know, commuter rail bus, 
a free passes for you as well. Um, what I'd like to and uh, what I'd like to do is just move on to some other possibilities. Um, so on the next slide, I'm going to talk about the Trade Promotion Coordinating Committee. We have a lot of acronyms in our in our line of work. Opportunities, in case you weren't aware, um, are we have a very close state partner in Portland, Maine, the Maine International Trade Center, and that that be a great avenue. Um, they uh, assist, obviously, main companies with exporting, and they have a lot of export programs. They do a lot of trade missions, various activities, um, and I know that <clears throat> they have a great, robust internship program as well. Uh, we have the Master's Office of International Trade and Investment, and they uh, basically coordinate any trade missions for the governor. They do reverse investment into Massachusetts from overseas, and they also help the various export programs as well. We also have the Massachusetts Export Center, which is basically very similar to what we do. They're a small business development center that mostly helps more, a lot more hand-holding in terms of companies helping them get started. I mention each of these because whichever state you might be in, um, there are state trade offices and small business development centers that are involved in exporting. So those could be great options certainly for the summer and also certainly in a virtual world as well that they might need a lot of international market research just like we do. Um, and what I also say for international students is that, even for US students, that uh, foreign trade offices are a great avenue. Uh, so we've, we've had an, some interns have also worked for the foreign trade offices, for example, at the British Consulate in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and helping British firms trying to get a foothold into New England. One uh, great site, uh, for New England organizations involved in international trade is the gbain.org, stands for Global Business Alliance New England. That's the big umbrella organization uh, for many different federal, state, city or agencies involved in international trade, but also trade associations and financial chambers of commerce and foreign trade offices and consulates as well. And, and so in terms of applying uh, for our internship, uh, we are in Handshake, uh, as a number of you. Uh, and also email me as well, there's my email. For other state opportunities with our agency, you could find those opportunities, export.gov slash the name of the state. And oftentimes they'll list the internship opportunity right on the front page. My suggestion is one of the uh, uh, things we've been trying to work on is uh, trying to update our state website. And we haven't been able to that in quite some time, unfortunately, to a couple hiccups. But, uh, so even if they don't have a listed internship program, you may want to go ahead and contact the office director and let them know that you're interested. Uh, overseas opportunities at the U.S. Embassies and Consulates, Africa, the name of the country. If many of those offices have internship programs as well, and they'll detail out those requirements. Uh, for full-time jobs, usajob.gov, um, that is uh, from uh, of the foreign commercial service. And there's going to be uh, you know, and typically it's like an exam, if you do need to have additional experience, so something that may be considered in the road, you, you would need to have a bachelor's, but also three years of specialized experience, typically in international trade, master's degree with two years of experience. And government agency based in DC, but could also be great for you. Program um, and for proposals and differences that believe for in just go ahead and apply for that. Uh, I think on September one, uh, about ten hours per week. Uh, so Jim, I. We've lost. See what some students have done. 
Yeah. We've lost your audio since oh. for probably the last 60 seconds or so. It's been either very choppy or we've lost you all together. So oh. Oh, you okay. might try. Um, oh, OK, great. What, what, what was the last thing I um, said? The last thing I think we yeah. heard clearly was um, right before you started talking about usajobs.gov. I know it would be it's less than ideal, oh. but I think if you shut off your okay. video, that might at least allow us to hear you more clearly. What I do is uh, I will stop sharing because I know all the different. Uh, have you been able to see the slide? Is there? Yes, we've been able to see the slide. Okay. 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 Great. Let yeah. me go ahead. And... Okay. Great. Is that better now? Yes. Okay. Okay. I, I appreciate my. Okay. Great. In terms of yeah. um, I think the slideshow just disappeared, at least on my screen. Yeah, he shut it off. Yeah, I think we've lost your audio altogether. Oh, okay. Am I okay. I'm not the only so, one, right? No, you're not uh, the only one. Okay. okay. Okay, are, are you even hearing me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, but if if you shut off your video, it might um, allow your audio to come in a little more clearly. Okay, so I shut off the picture. Is that better? Uh, no. Not really. No. Uh, okay. Uh, how about now? I. How about if I take out my uh, mail, take out my headset, and then I'll see if that works. Everybody, hear me now? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Okay, you can hear me. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I I will turn on my camera. See if you could still. Uh, are you able to see and hear me now? I can just hear you, but the the audio quality yeah. is much better. Same so, here. Um, it might um, it might make sense for you to just leave your your video off because the audio is coming oh, okay. through much okay. better. Yeah, sorry about okay, that. Okay, great. Well, <laughs> no, I I I I appreciate that. Thank you for. Um, uh, for letting me know. Yeah. So, in terms of USA Jobs, um, just to backtrack, uh, so our positions have been on uh, USA Jobs for almost every federal agency. It's on USA Jobs, and for uh, and obviously for any senior, and this is just something looking ahead. Um, that uh, uh, typically the applicant list are only open for a week or two uh, on USA Jobs. And there are some internships that are also posted on USA Jobs as well. So just be aware. They also do have an email alert that you could sign up for, but you may want to still, you know, from comfort, kind of uh, check as well on USA Jobs. Um, and that's what we have to hire as well. Uh, uh, we also do have a foreign commercial officer assessment. And uh, and typically you need a bachelor's degree with um, three years of international trade experience or a master's and two years experience. And that's on the worldwide track, very similar to the park as well. Uh, what I'd like to do now um, is I'd, love, I'd like to stop and um, see if there's any questions on anything I've said about our internship program, <laughs> other opportunities, Certainly, our work, I could talk more in terms of public, private, any of that. I can certainly talk about that as well. But I uh, just wanted to uh, see if there's any questions. Um, I have a question about how uh, this landscape or this uh, uh, like new uh, political landscape. Uh, sorry. 
Oh, what's the new political landscape? Um, like what? Uh, what uh, types of companies are um, are uh, like looking to uh, export more? Like. Uh, um, you, you cut out. You uh, cut out the end. Sorry. Um, uh, what types of companies are uh, looking to uh, are are still looking to export like through the uh, COVID crisis? Um, and what types of yeah. uh, products uh, are like uh, less likely uh, to uh, still uh, be have? Or is there still like, uh, less demand for uh, internationally? Um, like, has, has there still been uh, companies approaching you through this crisis for fields other than, like, medical care? Yes. Uh, so, question. And, um, and you're absolutely right uh, that through uh, this crisis, we have, have seen, you know, fewer client requests coming in uh, from, you know, uh, a lot of companies have been much more focused on the U.S. for right now. Um, and obviously just everything happening. So it's been pretty much across the board for most industries. Um, that's in a decline. You had mentioned that healthcare um, is a tennis need right now. Um, and one area that we've also been assisting is actually on reverse. And that is we're assisting with importation of for example. So we back to Collins have completely flipped um, their, their 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 position uh, in terms of uh, trying to help with imports. Um, for my area for international education, um, there's been a big uptick in demand um, because um, obviously a lot of schools uh, they want to you know uh, do what they can to you know, still kind of try to stabilize the international students, and that's been for every, almost every type of educational institution. And so we have a lot of programs available, and that's actually one of the reasons why we're, we're interested in what we normally do, because we have so many schools, anything from graduate programs to the four-year schools to community colleges, ESL, and even private high schools, in terms of help them trying to get more international students for the long term, but also for online courses. Uh, but very quiet. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Um, maybe we'll, I'll go to Daniel's question. He, he asked me to uh, talk about like bureaucracy, and it is very different, um, certainly uh, versus working in the private sector. Um, with, what I could tell you that for our agency is, um, you know, very fortunate that we feel like we're on the front lines quite a bit because we're working with private companies all the time and much more so than many other federal agencies. And so we find that we have to be innovative, thinking out of the box. Uh, we're rewarded for that, um, you know, and. One of the reasons, frankly, that I became director of our Boston office because I ran a couple new programs for our agency, and um, I got different accolades for that. But that's true for a lot of my colleagues: is that you're encouraged to be creative, certainly in this time as well. So we act as much as we can like a private company, and um, is very rewarding in that sense. And um, you know, we are reminded of that absolutely that we're still working for the government um certainly um about 15 months ago uh we had the longest government shutdown of 35 days so i love coming home and telling my kids i'm not essential <laughs> so yeah. so we um and, and that's just a bizarre situation because literally they told us or you know that it is illegal to do any work uh, you can't voluntarily fund the government. So, uh, so we, you know, I, I, I could check my emails, but little I cannot respond. So, so uh, you know, before the shutdown happened, we had four hours and we calendar and um, 
had to let anyone on my calendar know if I was doing a presentation or if I was doing a conference call or whatever the activity might have been, say to let them know, okay, if the government shut down, I can't join this activity. And by the way, I can't even let you know. I can't be in contact with you. So it's a very different world sometimes, but fortunately it's rare. And so I haven't really found much bureaucracy with our agency. Thank you very much. Okay, great. great. Um, any other any other questions? Okay, great. Uh, Peter, is there anything else you think that the students might be interested in hearing? You think I'll put you on the spot now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I would. Um, I would trust them to be uh, forthright with what they would want to know. Um, okay. And so the, I think everyone already knows that the internship um, for this summer is currently posted on Handshake um, and the application process is outlined pretty clearly there. So, um, and Mr. Paul's email address is also there. So if you had questions, follow up questions, um, you could uh, reach out to him, certainly. I think that's it. Okay, great. Well, 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 thank you all for joining. We'll appreciate it. I know, again, out here, it's a beautiful day. So really, really appreciate your joining our day like today. But it's great to speak with you all. And uh, as Peter mentioned, please do, um, uh, you know, if you haven't applied yet, please do go ahead and submit your application on Handshake because um, we would like to hire for the summer soon. And then for the fall will be ongoing. But absolutely feel free to reach out. If you have any questions at all on some of the other agencies or opportunities, that I'd mentioned, I'd be happy to provide more information. So uh, really appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Peter, and, and certainly work, but you all joined and I uh, hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you very thank you. much. Thanks very much. Have a great one. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.